Sea levels are rising at an alarming rate. Water rushes to cover streets, quickly swallowing entire cities. Earth is about to become a real-life water world. Can humans survive underwater? Or would this be the end of life as we know it? Sure, our blue planet is already 70% ocean, but that 30% of land is the difference between life and death. If Earth suddenly became completely submerged, humanity's chances of survival would be slim. Everything would begin here. Scorching heat waves, ravaging wildfires, raging windstorms would hit the planet all at once, causing a heat wave so long and intense it would melt all Earth's ice. And let me tell you, Earth has a ton of ice. 10% of all land is covered with it, from glaciers and ice caps to Antarctica's ice sheet. 12,000 years ago, when Earth was in its Ice Age era, ice covered 32% of all land, so 10% doesn't sound so bad. And the good news is, Earth has a lot of land. Even with all of today's ice suddenly melting, the sea levels would only rise 70 meters. But that would be enough to submerge the coastal cities. Very quickly, the ocean would flood New York, Miami, Vancouver, Rio de Janeiro. Europe would lose London, Paris, and Venice. All of the Netherlands would be gone. The Maldives, Fiji, and the Bahamas wouldn't be such dream vacation destinations anymore. They'd be obliterated. Lagos, Jakarta, Tokyo would be mostly gone too. The entire world would feel this devastating impact. Governments would try evacuating people inland, but with how fast things would be happening, none of these efforts would achieve anything. Rich nations like the United Arab Emirates would jump into immediate action and start building artificial islands off their coast to resettle their citizens. But building these islands would be a delicate, long, and costly process. Any underwater activity would immediately collapse the island, killing the workers and wasting billions. There would be nothing even the richest people could do to outrun the sudden flooding. The water would wipe out one-third of Earth's population. After the initial rise in sea level, the world would plunge into chaos. Survivors would raid stores for supplies, fight over housing, medicine, food and fuel. Forget the evacuation efforts. In this world, everyone would be left to fend for themselves. Anyone with a car would try to escape, causing total blockage of roads and highways. In all that chaos, you'd have a hard time connecting with anyone. Then, the power grids would start failing. You'd be cold, hungry, and scared, running for your life in the darkness. Now, you might think your life has changed forever, but what you don't know is that the worst is yet to come. You know, some of the wildest questions we get from fans are just a little too strange to fit into a normal episode, but also too good to ignore. So today, we're trying something new. It's called Hypothetically Speaking, a quick segment where I answer some of your most bizarre, brilliant, and brain-melting questions about today's hypothetical scenario, one curious thought at a time. Let's start with question number one. Let's see, Mohammed Sabik Masudi asks, would Wi-Fi still work if the Earth was all water? Well, yeah, Wi-Fi would still work, but only if you're above the water. You see, Wi-Fi signals are a type of radio wave, and they don't travel very well through water, especially through salt water. So underwater streaming is a no-go. And since our internet infrastructure, our fiber optic cables, data centers, cell towers, would all now be underwater or gone entirely, we'd need to rely on satellites and floating server farms to stay connected. 
Okay, moving on. The next question we have here is from our sponsor, Delete Me. Okay, that's, that's weird. Uh, anyways, they ask, will all the water wash away my personal data from the internet? Ah, uh, no. Did you give me this segment just so I could talk about our sponsor, Delete Me? No, water won't wash your personal data off the internet, but Delete Me can. And that's a good thing because there's a lot of your info floating around out there. And guess what? Some people are trying to sell it to the highest bidder. They're called data brokers. These are companies that collect personal information like your name, address, your family members, job history, even political views, and sell it. They scrape it from public records, social media, and even other data brokers. You've probably seen their sites without even realizing it. Places like White Pages, Spokio, Been Verified. But here's the problem. When that info's out there, it can lead to real life risks like phishing scams, identity theft, or even stalking. That's why I personally use and recommend Delete Me, the sponsor of today's episode. A Delete Me makes it super easy to remove your info from hundreds of these data broker websites. They scan the web, find your data, and keep removing it on an ongoing basis. It's already removed my info from 24 sites and found 774 pieces of personal data. And it's not just about me, this helps me protect my family too. Data brokers often show your relatives' info alongside yours. With a Delete Me family plan, you can protect your loved ones too. So, ready to take control? Well, get 20% off your Delete Me plan when you go to joindeleteme.com slash what if and use code what if at checkout. Well, I guess that was a sponsored segment after all. But we still got to answer some of your questions along the way. And want your question to be featured next time? Well, just keep an eye on the community tab. Now let's get back to the episode. Over one million underwater volcanoes lie within the depths of our oceans. The sudden heat wave apocalypse on land could awaken these volcanoes and cause them to erupt. And just like with all what if videos, this would be the worst case scenario. Suddenly, all underwater volcanoes start to erupt at the same time. As they trigger all around the world, magnitude eight earthquakes would rattle every continent. As skyscrapers crumbled, they'd bury millions beneath the rubble. Here's the thing about underwater volcanoes. They don't just spew out magma. They would also unleash water trapped deep within the Earth's mantle. Scientists think the mantle traps at least double the amount of water of all Earth's surface oceans. If even some of that water was released and added to the already rising sea levels, the land would submerge even more. Before anyone had a chance to recover from the devastating planet-wide earthquakes and rapid flooding, Towering tsunamis would sweep already decimated continents. The evacuation zones would become sites of mass chaos and panic. As people fled these walls of water, many would be trampled and die before ever catching a glimpse of safety. Tsunamis travel up to 50 kilometers per hour on land. Unless you're Usain Bolt, there's no hope of outrunning one. And while the tsunamis destroy everything in their way, the water released from the mantle will keep rising. Once sea levels reached 3.3 kilometers, two miles, every continent on Earth would be submerged. Only mountain peaks would tower above the water, but getting to them would be difficult. For the most part, Earth would now be a water world. At this point, whatever was left of the world's governments would attempt to form a new government and declare martial law. The mountain ranges would become safe zones, but even military forces couldn't rein in the chaos as civilians hoard food and build rafts for their families. 
as people were fighting for their lives above water, the New World Government would start making long-term plans. They'd start building underwater living units. Of course, these units wouldn't happen overnight. Building underwater cities would take time and collaboration. Soon, these habitats would become humanity's last resort. By day 60, Earth would never be the same. Forests, grasslands, deserts, everything would be gone. Plants that grow in soil wouldn't survive underwater, they'd start to die out. And with them, land animals would die out too. Of course, a lot of them would drown in the initial flooding, but with their food chain disrupted, the remaining land animals wouldn't last long in this new water world. It would be a mass extinction event on a level the Earth hasn't seen in 66 million years. And if you think marine life would be safe, you're wrong. With no land and all the ocean evaporation, there'll be more carbon dioxide in the air. The ocean would absorb that, triggering a chemical reaction that would turn the oceans more acidic. Now that would be lethal for marine life. Shell-forming organisms like clams and coral would be the first to go. With the food chain disrupted, not even massive whales would be safe. Now, our planet has wiped out species before. It created life and then mass killed it off, not once, but five times in Earth's long history. Each extinction event reshaped the biosphere, erased dominant species, and allowed new ones to emerge. The first time it happened was 445 million years ago, when most of Earth's early life existed in the oceans. It was a time of creatures like trilobites, brachiopods, and early coral reefs. During the Ordovician extinction, Earth suddenly cooled down and then warmed up again. This violent climate swing disrupted ocean chemistry and oxygen levels, collapsing ecosystems. In the end, it wiped out 85% of all species. The most recent extinction event involved a massive asteroid impact. 66 million years ago, the impact of this asteroid caused fallout that darkened the skies, disrupted the climate, and killed off all the dinosaurs. Scientists call it the Cretaceous Paleogene extinction. And now, it will be our turn to go extinct. Okay, two years after the initial melting of the ice caps, Earth would be unrecognizable. At this point, between 70 and 90% of all species would be gone. Of all the people that remained, most would survive by raiding and looting. We'd build boats out of anything we could get our hands on. The most organized and richest groups would move to subsea units. Now, these underwater communities would create fresh water by running ocean water through desalination tank, and they'd bring in air through tubes pumped from the surface. But the good news? The wealthy would leave their yachts behind. Above water survivors would take over these luxury boats, barges, and cruise ships, but these ships can only fit so many people. Survivors would collect rain and boil seawater, but those processes are far too slow to secure enough fresh water for everyone. Dehydration would kill thousands. Barges would band together to create new groups, initiating systems of trade and collaboration between floating communities. Some of these newfound societies would thrive, but as always, bad faith actors would plunge some into anarchy and violence, seizing resources for themselves and leaving the rest to starvation. Even in thriving communities with few medical treatments, diseases run rampant. We'd be forced to create harsh quarantines, abandoning anyone who shows even the slightest hint of illness. Now, at this point, Every ship and barge would run out of fuel and float stranded in the ocean. We'd be at the mercy of oceanic storms. And these storms would be much more dangerous on an Earth that's 100% covered by water. Usually, the land would weaken the storms as they move inland. But now, with no land left at all, these storms would be unstoppable. 
The air would become dense because of all the ocean vapor. It'd be hot and humid all the time. But not all would be lost. Some communities would successfully farm algae, a nutrient-rich and quickly grown food source. With the majority of the population already lost to flooding, malnutrition, and disease, the few survivors can secure enough resources to sustain themselves. Life on Waterworld Earth would be difficult for a long time. Let's be real, this is an everyone dies kind of scenario. It's likely that the result of Earth becoming 100% water and 0% land would be a near total extinction of Homo sapiens in a generation. In a more positive scenario, a few hundred thousand of us would be left to struggle to survive for a generation or two. It's not looking good for us. Even in the most positive scenario possible, Earth would house about 10 million people scattered in small communities all over the world. As humanity continued to live on the ocean, some evolutionary mutations would occur. Some sea communities have already developed these traits. The Bajau people in Indonesia have 50% larger spleens than you and me, providing them with a larger supply of oxygenated red blood cells and the ability to free dive to depths of 70 meters for as long as 13 minutes. Yeah, that isn't the only adaptation we'll see. The Munkan people in Thailand have adjusted their eyes to see underwater better. With better underwater vision and air supply, humanity would become advanced marine hunters, spearfishing successfully enough to feed their newfound families. But even with these evolutionary mutations, humanity can't survive long enough to fully adapt to the ocean. There won't be enough survivors to repopulate. The infant mortality rate would skyrocket due to malnourishment. Humanity's predisposition for violence will wipe the rest out. Sorry, I, I tried to stay positive here. You know, even though we came from the ocean, we really only evolved for the land. And while it's unlikely that all Earth's ice will melt in this short time, it is happening. 20,000 years ago, sea levels were 120 meters lower than they are now. Eventually, all glaciers and ice caps will melt. It'll just take us about 5,000 years to get there. Maybe we should start planning for a planet-wide evacuation. You know, set a course to settle on another planet. But that's a story for another What If. Hey, thanks again to Delete Me for sponsoring this video. To get your data removed from the internet, well, check out Delete Me using my link in the description and get 20% off.